Are hospitals inflating the death rate for coronavirus just so they can get some more money? Stay tuned and we can find out. Tuning in for another segment of Durag News. I'm your host, Rich Freeman, and you know we got the scoop. This is your favorite news, Durag News, so stay tuned. Democrats will be moving forward with another stimulus bill. More money. This time, $3 trillion. Some Republicans say that it's too soon to tell if the funds are needed, and they don't think it's a good idea to send more money just yet. But Nancy Pelosi is fighting with them to make sure Americans get that bread. Unemployment is still at an all-time high, and the workplace has not opened up just yet. So who knows when people will be going back to work. I know one thing. I could use some more money. Hey, Pelosi, send them bands. I got some bills to pay. Now let's check in with reporter Dick Johnson, who got the scoop on what the fuck is going on in the world. Dick, what up? What's good, everybody out there in Cyberland? I am Dick Johnson, and this is another installment of Dick Thoughts. And today on Dick Thoughts, I want to discuss a few things that I've been thinking about. Let's talk about it. Hmm. Where do I start? I guess. Let's start with this 6666. It has been reported that a congressman by the name of Barry Rush is pushing for a new bill called the House Resolution 6666. Or the TRACE Act. And in this bill, they want to push for mobile medical officers to come check to see if you have COVID. This bill will be $100 billion if it gets passed. Now my thing is, where is all this money coming from? All this funding is crazy. And on top of that, and some of that money can actually go to your neighbors for being spies for the 6666 bill. You know, to me it sounded like the snitching is becoming more of a popular thing. Well, I guess speaking of snitches, you know who you want to talk about. You know, and I'm one to not feed into the frenzy. But at this point, the agenda of tattling is switching on us. You know, I see this guy, this character, this clown as a show. Last week, when this guy comes back out, he breaks a whole bunch of records. Me personally, I don't think it's the music. I think it's the whole charade. One thing I was thinking about, I think he's going to lose a lot of his melanated fan base. But you know, young Caucasians don't care about those things. It's really the show. Which brings me to my next point. Young white kids love what black people do. We see all the time where white kids want to be down with the brown and it makes them lit to their people. Like Justin Timberlake, Vanilla Ice, MGK. We make them lit. And they leave. Now, I know he's not part of the Caucasian family. But when you do come over here and get accepted, everybody else accepts you too. To be honest, I think it was over ever since he was accused of mess with little girls. I think that's when the feds came in and really started to infiltrate. But I have no proof about that. But one thing I can say is that he may smile on the screen. But he screams in his dreams. And here's somebody else that always seems to have more to the story. When you're in the middle of an outbreak, wearing a mask might make people feel a little bit better. And it might even block a, a droplet. But it's not providing the perfect protection that people think that it is. It's funny that I said more to the story. Just recently... There has been a video that surfaced of Ahmaud Arbery actually inside of the under construction house. Now, does that change the narrative? For many, it doesn't. But a few, I think it does. But like I always say, I am a firm advocate of history. And doesn't this sound a lot like the Trayvon Martin case? Y'all remember Trayvon Martin, right? The killers get off because of self-defense. In these two cases, the accusers were actually on the phone with the police, following what they thought to be a criminal. In both cases, these young men were confronted. They both resisted armed citizens, 
which led to them being killed. I am very interested to see how this plays out because I feel like I'm in deja vu all over again. And with this, we're not seeing any answers anytime soon. As you can see, there's a lot to be discussed and the truth will be revealed sometime down the line. But one thing I can say is that you definitely should keep your nose clean, literally and figuratively, because you don't know who's watching and you don't know who is scheming. That's it. I'm about to enjoy the rest of this nature. Back to you, Rich. Thanks, Dick. I see you really keep your ear to the streets and you know what's going on. And with all this frenzy going on with the rat, all we got to do is focus our attention on what really matters. Real life shit that's in front of us. Hospitals all around the country may be fudging numbers to increase deaths caused by COVID-19. Although hospitals' primary function is to provide health care to those who need it most, keep in mind that another major priority is that money. Due to the stimulus bill, hospitals are incentivized to diagnose a patient's death as COVID-related to receive more money per each death. It's also standard for Medicare to pay hospitals about three times more for a patient put on a ventilator. Hospitals get paid $13,000 if a COVID-19 patient is admitted and $39,000 if the patient is put on a ventilator. If the patient is put on a ventilator, then the patient will need more services, therefore raising the amount the hospital receives for the patient. Now, I'm not here to suggest that the numbers are inflated only for the money. Hey, I'm sure folks have actually died directly from COVID-19 complications. But I think there should be a more clear determining factor to decide whether or not patients were diagnosed with COVID because they were tested or if they had symptoms of COVID. Those are two completely different things. COVID-19 symptoms include cough, shortness of breath, fever, chills, repeated shaking, muscle pain, headache, sore throat, loss of taste or smell, trouble breathing, persistent pain, weakness, confusion, inability to arouse, bluish lips or face, blah, 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 broken leg, broken arm, broken neck. Sounds like a commercial for medication that has mad side effects. Nevertheless, if the hospitals are inflating numbers to get more money, that's causing a higher perceived death rate, causing a longer social distancing for the people and more people to be out of work. I'm not saying I have the answer, but something got to give. And to the hospitals, I know y'all want y'all bread, but the more y'all inflate the COVID-19 cases and deaths, the longer the regular working class citizen will be out of work. Just think about them. In more corona news, there was a video that surfaced of a hospital nurse discussing malpractice amongst black patients in the hospital. Check this out. These people aren't dying from COVID. Black lives don't matter here. I'm literally coming here every day and watching them kill them. Gross negligence and complete medical mismanagement. Nobody cares because they're all minorities and we're in the fucking hood. We still have a 100% mortality rate in the ICU unit. Like if we were in Nazi Germany, like taking the Jews to go put them in a gas chamber. That video is definitely alarming because it now adds validity to the claim that not all deaths are caused due to the coronavirus, but also malpractice from doctors and nurses. I know folks don't want to hear it, but it is the truth. Recently, a close family friend told me that his mother-in-law passed away and the coroner is writing off the death as a natural death when it was not. Keep in mind that when a death is written off as natural, you will have trouble suing the hospitals and doctors for malpractice. And during this time of the so-called pandemic, there is less liability on doctors because they can just blame the death on COVID-19. And now we check in with Chaos 360 with this week's Do Rags and Hip Hop. Chaos, what up though? What's good everyone? For those who don't know me, my name is Chaos 360 and it's another segment of Do Rags and Hip Hop. Let's go! This week's artist will be shouting out for Jillio. His album's out now. Red Velvet. Go check it out on all platforms. It's fire. Hey. I keep loose ties like balls around five. Anywhere in the world, the cause is outside. Anywhere on this earth, I swap that lie, lie. So don't fear for your vision that far is cloud nine. Steps on the scene, niggas look like mascots next to my team. Left lane, the regime. Speed never slow when I chase for the green. Catch me in a five-star shrimp fettuccine. In any kind of fly car, bitches in the king. 
Philly to Belize, New Guinea to Philippines. Round them all up, cause I'm bringing them to Queens. And many shapes and form. I don't care long as they perform. Got a man at home that's waiting for him. And she backstage spread like Grey Poupon. Today on Do Rags and Hip Hop, we'll be talking about one of the most underrated MCs from the Bronx. One of my top five lyricists, Frederick Thompson, known as Fred the Godson. Frederick Thompson grew up in the South Bronx. He was born on February 22nd. It is not confirmed if he is 35 or 41. Uh, what's up? What's Pisces, one? man. February 22nd. Pisces, Powell. Yeah, yeah, what up? Whatever that means. Um, <laughs> well, happy birthday. My bad. My bad. I didn't mean to be rude. In the early 2000s, he began his rap career freestyling in the Bronx. He was always known for his humorous wordplay and his crazy metaphors. So in 2010, he released two mixtapes called Armageddon and City of God. 2011, he was noticed and he made the cover of Double XL Freshman Class. Uh, move pies like Papa John. When we in the ride, be quiet with Big Papa. I'm being honest, I got that flame you like G Unit. You ain't got no game. Although Fred DeGarson was an amazing MC, he had some health issues like diabetes, kidney problems, and asthma. To make matters worse, Fred DeGarson contracted COVID 19 and was having complications breathing. He was seen on IG with his family, showing courage, and giving us good vibes that he was gonna be okay. Peace to everybody, you know. You know, wife just went upstairs, she shut, the, she, shut the, she shut the girls up. Lucky school, lucky school right now, you know. You know, in the meantime, I, I'm doing my homework, I'm writing my bars. Still gonna be giving y'all that fire, you know, family. Hope everybody good. Go on, go. Holla. Courage, y'all. Courage. Sadly, on April 23rd, 2020, Fred DeGasson passed away from complications of COVID-19. Fred DeGasson is on the top five of my favorite lyricists because his lyrics, period. He had slick wordplay. He always made sure he took time with his raps. And he always sound different. Yeah. I do the right thing when I write things. Try and stay true, that's the right thing. Yeah. Watching CNN, that's my wife thing. I'm Nori, I'm bumping CNN while bagging up the white thing. Product of the ghetto though. The D's on our hills and we still let those go. <clears throat> hills, notice I said stiletto. Still, lawn knows the pedal, pedal to the metal. You in a race with the devil, get you erased in that Louis. You in LV, I'm the rebel. Yeah. Um, yes, arm rest in the Buick. Might be the best that ever do it. Uh. He had a collaboration with one of my favorite artists, Jada Kiss, another one of my top lyricists, and they're similar with their with their bars and their metaphors. But I think Jada Kiss, Jada Kiss is a nice rapper. But I think Fred the Godson got. A little better metaphors than Jada Kiss. I nickname your girl Ken. Cause every time the car dash she in. Yeah, I used to scrape the plate. What? Brillo had the head swinging back and forth. What? Willow. I think Fred DeGarson is one of the top MCs with the metaphors. Period. Fred DeGarson always repped New York in all of his raps. He always put a smile on people's face with the humor in his lines. R.I.P. Fred the Godson. Back to you, Rich. R.I.P. Fred the Godson. You really rep New York to the fullest. Such an unfortunate loss, but here in New York, we will keep playing your music in remembrance of you. Rest in peace, homie. On Mother's Day, President Trump got his Twitter fingers itching and accused Obama of committing the worst political crime in history. That's what he said. 126 tweets later, and we are still unsure exactly what is Obamagate. Play the clip. Mr. President, in one of your Mother's Day tweets, you appear to accuse President Obama of the biggest political crime in American history by oh. far. Those were your words. 
What crime exactly are you accusing President Obama of committing, and do you believe the Justice Department should prosecute him? Uh, Obamagate. It's been going on for a long time. It's been going on from before I even got elected, and it's a disgrace that it happened. And if you look at what's gone on, and if you look at now all of this information that's being released, and from what I understand, that's only the beginning. Uh, some terrible things happened, and it should never be allowed to happen in our country again. And you'll be seeing what's going on over the next — over the coming weeks. But I, And I wish you'd write honestly about it, but unfortunately, you choose not to do so. Yeah, John, please. I'm, what is the crime, exactly, that uh, you're accusing him of? You know what the crime is. The crime is very obvious to everybody. All you have to do is read the newspapers, except yours. Basically, Obama is being accused of framing top Trump officials early in order to derail Trump's presidency. At this point, it has not been proven, but narratives pick up steam nowadays without any facts. Trump accuses Obama, along with his then-Vice President Joe Biden, former FBI Director James Comey, intelligence services in both the U.S. and internationally, of creating this phony theory that Trump was colluding with Russia in order to win the 2016 election. The theory was used to spy on and frame members of Trump's inner circle. If you notice, many of Trump's cabinet he started with jumped ship or got locked up. His former security advisor, Michael Flynn, pleaded guilty to lying to FBI investigators during the Robert Mueller investigation in 2017. But recently, the Justice Department unexpectedly dropped those charges, saying that the investigation was not justified. So people, we have another scandal on our hands. Let's see how this turns out. And will this be the next focus to distract us from the 2020 election? And what's with putting the word gate after every scandal? Remember, Watergate, Deflate Gate, Pizza Gate, now Obama Gate? I guess you can just put gate after anything if you want to make it into a scandal, right? Just say gate. Your girl cheating on you? Say her name, then gate, right? Your man cheating on you? Say his name, then gate. Now that's a wrap with this week's Durag News. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of great news in store, so make sure y'all stay tuned and keep that Durag energy strong. Like bars around five. Anywhere in the world, the cars is outside. Anywhere on this earth, I swap that lie lie. So don't fear for your vision, that fog is cloud nine. Steps on the scene, niggas look like mascots next to my team. Left lane, the regime. Speed never slow when I chase for the green. Catch me in a five star shrimp fettuccine. In any kind of fly car, bitches in bikini. Philly to Belize, New Guinea to Philippines. Round them all up, cause I'm bringing them to Queens. In many shapes and form I don't care long as they perform Got a man at home that's waiting for him And she backstage spread like Grey Poupon International, I'm a flight risk Got women from all over, Heidi flight shit Chef boy, y'all keep flavors like Goya From her bitches to lawyers, they working for me So call me an employer I double tap it in real life You niggas scroll past it, I know what it feel like